the E chord. You've tried it, you've played it, maybe you're doing well with it, maybe you're struggling, but today we're gonna talk about some tips and tricks, and I'm gonna give you a procedure and some exercises to help you master the E chord. So let's get into it. Hey, before we get started, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and click that alert bell so you know when the next video is coming your way. If you're interested in more learning resources, head over to allforyouk.com where we have a full searchable library of songs, song sheets, practice tracks, worksheets, and more. All for you, allforyouk.com. Let's start off by talking about the four common chord shapes that you'll see for the E chord in first position. So the first one that you may have encountered, and this is the first one I encountered as I started playing the uke, is this weird one here on the first four frets. So I put my index finger on the G string first fret, middle finger on the A string of the second fret, and reach my pinky out here to the fourth fret of the C string. So this requires a little larger hand, especially if you're on a tenor or concert uke to play this shape. And I have my thumb positioned basically right behind the fret of the first fret. So not behind the second space, but right behind the actual fret wire here. So when I play this chord, I also have to make sure that my thumb is positioned pretty far down on the back of the neck because if I wrap it, this chord is gonna lay down. So I really wanna be on my fingertips for this one, so I have to push my thumb down and kind of get my hand forward here. So this is the first shape that you may encounter for the E chord. The next one that I've found to be probably one of the more popular ways to play the E chord without playing a bar is using middle ring and pinky on the G, C, and E string of the fourth fret and then stretching my index finger back here to the second fret of the A string. Sounds just about the same as the other E chord, which you're probably asking yourself, why is that? Why are there multiple shapes for the same chord? Well, that is because the chords contain the same notes, and the notes for the E chord are E, G sharp, and B. So wherever you have those notes in a chord, that's an E major chord. So this is gonna come into play as we kind of keep diving into shapes here. So we have our E shape here without the bar version. And I find this to be one of the easier ways to play it because you can get your hand in this nice tilted position towards the headstock and put your thumb right in the middle of the back of the neck to keep your hand pushed forward because again, you want to avoid laying down the fingers. You want to be upright and on the fingertips. And you can do that if you get your thumb kind of slid down in the middle of the back of the neck. So this is shape two for the E major chord. Now the first bar shape that we'll come across here when you play the E chord, and you may have seen this one, is by taking your ring finger and barring the G, C, and E, just like you were playing with three fingers, but you can play this with your ring finger and your index finger again on the A string of the second fret. Now we're starting to contort the hand a little bit, which gets a little bit more challenging. So let's talk about the ring finger here and its importance of this chord. Because you're having to bar three strings with one finger, and I'll kind of give you a view here of my knuckle popped up here, and that's a big factor when you're playing this chord. You wanna make sure that your knuckle is popped up because if you're laying down at all, you're gonna deaden this note out. So when you're trying this version, pluck through these notes, and you should be doing this on all of these chords. Make sure every note is ringing through nice and clear as you play. If you're getting any dead notes, you know that you need to make adjustments. Something else to mention here is my ring finger is very much parallel to the fret here. I'm not angling it, and I'm not angling it this way. I really wanna to try to get this nice and straight. So again, this is a challenging version to play, and it might not be for you. The When I started thinking about this and my ring finger, I have a little bigger hands, so this space here on my finger where I'm pressing down is able to cover those three strings, but if you have smaller hands, you might not be able to cover those three strings. So this shape might not be for you, that's okay. You have other options. So this is the bar shape. And then our final bar shape that we can use here, which this I feel like is another common way to play it. And one of the first ways that I played the E chord was by barring the entire fourth fret with my index finger pinching right behind it with my thumb, 
and making sure that I'm again my hand is nice and pushed forward should kind of see the place where your fingers meet your palm out in front of the fretboard when you play this and then you're going to extend your pinky out to the seventh fret on the A string. So again this one sounds a little different because you have this high E note in the chord but again, it has those same three notes, E, G sharp, and B in the chord. So those are four different shapes that you can use for the E chord. Now we're gonna talk about a procedure to kind of go through here to work on playing the E chord and some ways that you can kind of get through this and start adding the E chord to your playing. Hey, Kevin here, exciting news for you guys. I have a new offering. I've partnered with a company called Zip to offer one-to-one -one performance coaching. All that means is you submit a video to me with your questions, concerns on the uke. I submit a video back to you with tips, tricks, and some exercises to help you get through those little mogul hills. I'll leave a link in the description below for you to sign up. Let's have some fun together. Well, now that we know our chord shapes, how do we improve these so that we can actually play them? It's all fine and dandy to know what the chord shapes are, but I'm going to give you a little procedure here and some exercises to work on so that you can actually play these chords. Now, my first bit of advice is take the chord out of the equation. So you've come across an E chord in a song and you're struggling to get to it, but you just keep repeating the full passage. And every time you get to that chord, you slow down, you stop, you try it again, it doesn't work. So what you do is you pull this chord out of the equation and work on it specifically. You work on it every day until you can start feeling like you're getting more confident with it. Then you put it back into the chord progression and I guarantee you when you do that, you're gonna execute this chord a little bit better. Now let's start with these two chord shapes here and go through the procedure and how to work on them. So the first one here we'll use is the middle ring and pinky and the index finger on the second fret version right here. So we have this chord in place and now when you have it down, that's great. How do we get to it and how do we get better at it? Well, the first thing that I like to do is I take this chord and I do what I call compress and decompress. So I take the chord, I compress my fingers down and I'll either do a thumb drag with my strumming hand, make sure they're all clear or I'll just do kind of a nice little strum. I probably would suggest going through and plucking each string because sometimes if you just strum through the chord, you can disguise those dead notes. So I would suggest going through there, making sure all of those notes are ringing through clearly on the chord. So what you do is you compress the chord down, play it, decompress. Do this about five times in a row. Really focus on this. Watch your hands as you're doing it. Really watch your fingers. If there's adjustments that need to be made, this exercise is going to reveal those to you. You'll watch your fingers and see, are they slipping out onto the frets? Are they not touching all the way? Am I laying one of my fingers down on a string that it shouldn't be? This exercise really helps you focus right in on this chord so that you can get down all of those notes and have them ring through nice and clear. So that's the four finger version of it. Now let's take a look at the bar chord version of it. So if we're barring with our ring finger here, again, same thing. I'm just gonna take this chord, strum it, and then I'm gonna decompress and I'm gonna compress back down with my fingers. And you can even just do this while you're sitting watching TV doing something that's kind of mindless you can take and work on single chords like this. I always like to do this because I don't think we spend enough time focusing on specific chords. We kind of just use them in songs and move on when they're challenging. I'd take those chords that are challenging to you, remove them from the equation, compress and decompress on them a bunch of times. So after you work on compressing and decompressing these chords, now we're gonna take it a step further. We're gonna lift the chord off and try to keep it in formation so that we can lay it back down on the fretboard. So we have our E shape here with the bar chord. And what we're gonna do is lift this chord off and we start off by just lifting off a little bit. We don't have to fully take our hand off. So maybe start with, you know, a millimeter to a centimeter, a very small amount and then just try to take that chord and put it right back down where you left it. 
Don't move your fingers over to the other frets. Try to keep them aligned right over the frets. Lay them right back down. If you can go up higher with them, great. But all you need to go is just a little bit. You're just trying to really get that feeling and sensation of grabbing the cord over and over again so that your fingers are building muscle memory and you're building that confidence in the cord. So that's the second exercise. You can repeat that same thing using the four finger version of E because when you look at cords and you're moving cords around, something to keep in mind is you always wanna form the cord before you get to the strings. You don't wanna form the cord on the strings and grab one string at a time. You wanna have that cord in formation. If you watch my hand here closely, I'm keeping this E formation as I lift off. So when I'm getting ready to go to this cord, I already have my fingers positioned exactly where I want them to lay down on the strings. And the only way to really get good at this is just to do it over and over and over again. So that's part two. And then the final thing that I'd like you to do here when you start working on this is incorporate other chords. So you've spent some time lifting off, compressing, decompressing. That's all fine and dandy because that helps you get that specific chord down. But in reality, you'll be playing these chords with a chord progression. So you'll need to use them with other chords that you'll commonly see used with E. Well, a couple of common chords are D and A. So why not take a couple of those chords and work out a couple of little progressions? And I'll put a worksheet together with some exercises and progressions for you guys you can check out on the website. But a good one here to start with would be going from the D chord to the E chord. So we have a D chord here, second fret, G, C, and E string, and we're just using middle, ring, and pinky, and we take this chord, we play it, and then we slide over to E and play it, and we go back. So this is helping us get used to kind of moving into the chord, keeping that shape intact as we move, and laying down the chord. We can take that a step further. We can go from A major to D major to E, or E right back to A. So find some of those chords in the key of E. Check out the key chord chart we have on the website if you'd like to see that. So take these exercises in this procedure and apply it to the E chord or any other chords that you're finding yourself struggling with. And make sure you do these all the time. Take them out of the equation and put them back into your chord progressions. I promise they're gonna help you. If everything I said still isn't working for you, I've got a couple of alternative shapes for you and some suggestions to keep in mind here. Something that you can do that I've tried before is playing the E chord without the index finger in use at all. So what you can do here is with the three finger shape, middle, ring, and pinky, play this chord but kind of do what I always say not to do and kind of rotate your hand down so that you mute the A string on the bottom. So if I play this chord, I still get my E, G sharp, and B note in the chord without playing the index finger, and I just mute this string. So I still have an E chord, and I don't have to bar anything, and I don't have to use four fingers. So that's an option. Another common way that I'll play this is I'll do the exact same thing with my ring finger. And I kind of just aim my strum so that I'm lifting off and not hitting this string. But I'm also kind of laying my ring finger down so that it mutes the A string again and I don't have to worry about playing it. So sometimes when I'm playing something between D and E, I still get that full E chord sound without having to worry about the four finger chord or the bar chord. So those are a couple of ways that you can try to play it. And some other things to keep in mind as you're working on this chord are maybe you have a soprano or concert uke where the fret space is really small and you're trying to cram all of your fingers in to that fret and it's just not working for you. Maybe 
just try it. You could go to a shop and check out a different uke. Try a tenor uke. Try a little bigger size uke. Maybe go from soprano to concert. That's going to give you a little wider fret spacing here on the instrument so you'll have more room to squeeze your fingers down. You can also try starting up a little higher on the neck with this chord. So it won't be an E chord, obviously, but you can take the same shape and play it up higher where the strings are a little bit looser and easier to push down. So that's a couple of suggestions for playing the E chord and a couple of little tips that you can use as you try to work on this chord. My hope is this video has given you the confidence to attack this E chord and feel good while you're doing it. I put together a worksheet at allforyuke.com where you can work on some different chord progressions with the E chord and really get into the habit of using these procedures as you approach any challenging chord going forward. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kevin and I'll see you next time. Let's get